In today's video, you're going to learn to make riverbanks like that. So I'm gonna teach you how to make them look a lot more natural, to make them really go into your designs rather than looking like some water spaces out of place. How to get there? Well, we're gonna learn it. So let's do it. All right, first things first. This might be the typical type of lake or water hole that you will do in Planet Zoo. Well, this is actually what I have done in the beginning before I started to learn how to do it better. Before we actually do certain things, um, here are four images in front of you from which you can learn how to get some inspiration for these type of riverbanks. I'm gonna explain a little bit why this is important. So first things first, not every riverbank is the same. The way how water flows and how water is, is rather different. So you've got very flowing water, like a very strong water that is going to clean off and wipe off uh, some of the things on the riverbank. So you don't really have those super shallow riverbanks. You might also have certain things that are kind of carved out by all the water flowing through then you've got some uh, very you know, like nice and still waters you know where there is not really going on a lot and then you have got some very nice riverbanks that are just formed by some wind and stuff like that which made the water move over time and then you have certain different things from rivers that might not be as strong and they do form some other types of riverbanks as well and all these things you have to keep in mind to what you want to do and how things should look for you um, depending on what you want to do as a design. Okay, with that in mind, let's get to going. All right, first things first, let's first of all speak about the tools that we are going to have today. Now, obviously, we're going to start with the terrain tool and you are going to need a certain mixture of tools. The first thing that you might want to use is the flattened to terrain tool. Now, um, uh, sorry, the flattened to ter terrain. Um, this thing over here is rather, uh, rather new and we got this a couple of months ago, but there is a very good thing in this um, tool that will help you a lot. So as you can see over here, I got it to intensity 100% and size is uh, 20 meters. I set the terrace height to two and I set shallow pool offset. Now what that does, and it's actually very hard to see that way, um, I should actually go to um, use the use selected and then we go and use the soil so you guys can see that a bit better. So what I'm going to do over here, let me just move over so we have a new spot. Um, I'm just clicking uh, the left mouse button and as you can see, this area which is forming right now is ever so slightly lowered because we have this shallow pool offset which is going to give you a little bit of an offset down there. So if you go here and you have got the water in, you can see the water line is basically exactly around this area as you can see. Uh, very easy. Um, the good thing about this is as you can see it's gonna create a very 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 shallow pool. Now why is that important? So first of all just click it to get a feeling for that but now let's get rid of the water. This is a very good thing because this is giving you the idea where the water line is going to go. Now what I mean by that is it's very important in terms of building a lake or a river that you have some natural river lines and areas. If you don't do this with the shallow offset typically what people do is they use the push tool and let me just not use the full power um, they just dig like a little hole and basically this is what I did in the beginning as well like that you know and then you start using maybe flatten the flatten to drain tool whatever and just start carving out blah 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 you do it like that okay um, and then if you put the water in you can see that I didn't do it correctly and as you can see I have the problem that for example this area here is not as I wanted it to because I wanted to have the water more like here so I need to go down quite a lot and as you can see the you know the edge is not exactly where I wanted it to um, and this is because the water in this game just as a very very little excursion the water in this game is always in steps of one meter so if you have the corner over here the next possible corner is exactly one meter lower or one meter higher so obviously as we don't have anything to connect to one meter higher is not working so the next step is one meter lower but what you want to have is an exact shot line or like riverbank that you can use and with the shallow offset tool you will create exactly this little little bit of offset that you then can use. Now let me show you how. So you go down in here and then you use the flatten to foundation tool. We're gonna go and keep it to the maximum strength because we want to form like a very good line. I wanna use a bit of a smaller radius now because I want to form this little lake over here. So what you're going to do now is you're just going to follow the way you want to have it laid out, okay? So let's say we're just going to have a very nice little lake like so. 
just like that. And then we might want to connect this to a little bit of a river, okay? So we're just going to go here, and this is going to be where our river sits. So that's that. And then the river is going to be connected to over here, nicely in there, and then just drag it all the way over here. I just don't want to do it too crazy, but just a little bit, okay? So if we've done that, normally, if we click down here, you will see that the water is exactly at the outline of what you've painted. So it gives you a very, very good idea where your absolute edge is. And the, the reason why we do this um, is going to be important in a second. Now, let me just do a couple more things. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger and draw out a little bit more over here just to make that a bit more nice. And then just over here, I want to have like a bit more of an edge. Same goes over there, nice. And just don't worry about the texture as of now. We will take care of the texture later. Now, um, we've done that. Again, just a little test, put the water in. All works very fine, very neat indeed. Okay, so this is what we are going to work with, okay? Um, this is a river, we are going to hide that away later on. I'm just going to show you something. This is why we connected this little thing over here. Now, very important is get rid of the water now and don't touch it for a couple of times and a couple of minutes because in this game unfortunately you can't edit anything around the terrain once you have put down the water so you always have to work with the typical um, planning so what we need to do now is grab yourself a texture it doesn't really matter which one you want to have right now it's just for you to to kind of, you know, draw out where you want to have the deep area of the lake. And typically, what you can do is use the flow of the water. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go here and I'm going to, well, let me just use the grass shot because that's going to be a bit more obvious to see. So imagine the water flow goes like that and then just like pushes down from over here into the water and then it goes a little bit like this, okay? So this is where usually the water then would start to circle around. So you might wonder why the hell is this dude now doing this because we don't have flowing water. That's right, but this defines the depth of your water because usually the water, um, the water line and the water, how the water runs is creating a certain um, depth to your area. So what you're going to do is you just paint where it's deeper and usually where the water runs it's deeper and then it carves out what is going on there and then you know the more you go to the outside it's less deep in these areas so that's what we do. So as you can tell from over here we just defined where it has to be a bit deeper. So what we're going to do now and this is very important we're going to set where the depth goes and the deepest part. So we said that this is the deepest part so what you want to do is just you know, use your push tool and push it down a little bit. It doesn't matter if you go, but you have to set your deepest point. This should be our deepest point now. So we use the flatten to foundation now and we just go and flatten this area out. You know, don't worry about this at this point. We are going to make this look good anyways, but it's very important that you set yourself the deepest point right, uh, right at the beginning. Now let's make this a little bit smaller and then just follow the line through here where the water comes from. So that's that. That's the deepest bit where we're going to follow, okay? So this is that. This is very nice. What we do now is we just go one area higher and we're just going to increase the size a little bit like so. And we're just going to just go all the way over here. So this is the next kind of bit where we go. And very important now is that you just drag it all over here and just create it to both sides just a little bit, okay? And then just don't forget to paint the, the deeper part in again just to maintain that. It's like a little bit of a, f a trial and error at this point, but this is where the deepest part is. Okay, so we've set out to this one. Now let's go to the next height area. So this is that one, okay? Um, I highly recommend always using the flatten to a foundation tool. I'm going to show you in a bit why. So this for me personally is the best tool. Um, and now what you're going to do is you just do that to both sides, you know, just make sure to follow everything like that. Very nice indeed. If you want to carve out the lower area a bit more, you can do so. Again, this is a tutorial. You will actually need to, you know, get used to it over time. So I'm just going to do it that way. Okay, so we've done that. Very nice, very neat, but still there's a little bit too much of an offset over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to tackle the next area. And now it's very important that you get even more, you know, shallow over here, just like 
create certain steps, I want to call them, okay? The elevation as a step. And then just keep on drawing a little bit like that um, and just drag it all over where you want it. Um, maybe it would be very good to use even smaller. Let's go to two and then just follow. Uh, keep it always to 100% strength because that will always give you the best control um, simply because the smaller you get, the harder it is to, you know, find the right strengths and stuff. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Um, this side over here still looks very awkward. So let's make that a little bit bigger. And then we just find ourselves like a very nice area and just, you know, make that a little bit more shallow. And uh, there you go. So this is, <coughs> this is very neat. We got this over here. Maybe this area over here needs a bit of clean off. And as you can see, this is like a very deep step, which you might not want to have. So go to the pull tool, um, decrease the strengths quite dramatically to like 30% and raise the... Um, uh, the, the size a little bit and then just keep pushing from the lower side a little bit okay don't do it too crazy because you don't want to go too high you don't want to raise this bit over here simply because then you might push it out of the water which you don't want to so you might also want to go down with the flat into the foundation tool and just clean off if you have done certain things like I have done over here awesome okay once you've done that um, it is very important and let me just clean that off a little bit more over here so there is a bit more just like so Okay, so that this is not as harsh. And now, basically, the groundwork of what we wanted to have is done. Now you can actually go in and um, just push a couple of things here and there, just to make it a bit more natural, because the, the ground wouldn't be perfectly flat. I mean, it is rather flat, because the water is painting in flat, but maybe certain areas are, you know, not having the best condition ever, so you, you might just want to do it that way. So, just push here and there. So this is the basic area. Now, I'm just going to put water in for a second to see if I have done everything correct. That looks fine to me and you can already tell there's a lot more detail in the water stream already now let's get rid of it because there's still problematic things um what we need to do now is go to the smooth tool and now it's very important to increase the intensity again to all 100 percent and then go to well you got to find your best way i think eight meters is fine for now and then you have to be very careful by pushing just a little bit just push a little bit so that you clean off these edges a little bit over here okay just like so okay just like really really clean these off to make things not as hard sometimes you want to have it hard but it's it needs to be still good to know that there is like you have to see that there is a difference in height but it has has to be more shallow okay now this is done and now i come to the to the last point that i found out in Basically, in this build over here, this is where I found this little trick. Um, it's very important that you don't use it at the highest point, but you can use it uh, in the second layer, third layer, and fourth layer. Go to flatten to foundation, go to like 70% 70, 70 is fine, and then go to a size that you feel good with. I think four meters for this build specifically over here is good. It always depends on, obviously, how big your lake is. If you have it now, you can start clicking. And the good thing is you just search yourself some, some of the uh, corners over here. And as you can see, I'm just like clicking like a madman in here. It's almost like carving in. What you're doing basically is you're creating slight offsets to what you've done. And this is something I can't really give you a tip how to do it exactly. It's like you'll get a feeling for that. Once you start clicking, you create certain areas that look a lot better. As you can see, I'm just like trying to move myself towards you know the uh, the riverbank and as you can see it's creating these lovely little offsets over here and again make sure that you don't go to the highest but it's it's very nice you can really make some subtle areas like that sometimes you've got to have to you know co correct some of the things because our water stream isn't correct anymore and there you go this is nice and then the, the normal thing is i just go back to 50 percent of the smooth tool very nice indeed and then just slightly smooth over don't do it too much you you do want to have these slight irritations in there but there you go now you put the water back in see if everything is correct and we succeeded actually the shoreline is very neat indeed. Okay, so next thing is painting. Before we do anything else, we are just doing some painting. And again, this depends on your biome. But what you want to have is you do have some coarse sand. You can actually go to some of these areas where you want to have it. Just push it in, you know, just like that. And make sure that you have a bit of a 
you know wider range of riverbanks so that it doesn't look too much connected to like the the harsh edge over here we do have a harsh edge over here this is fully intentional we come to that in a second um so you've done that and just make sure to click out a little bit then you go to the sand oh wait, uh, sand fine and just push that in as well just to give it a bit more of a of a you know uh, texture just make sure that you don't have it on on the highest always keep it 50% so you mix the texture a little bit and the next bit is very important we are going to go and give the lower part a different kind of shading and we're using the soil over here to make it a bit darker and just make sure that it goes in you can also use the rock to give it a bit of a different texture and you want to bring the lower part of the lake a little bit more to the side so you're just going to use the brighter texture in this case i'm going to use a bit of sand just to make the lower side a little bit more bright and then you can also play around with some rock textures to make it a little bit more um you know uh, contrasty that's something i like to do and then just start to paint a little bit of the different things to the shoreline so you don't want to have any grass in there because that's not something you would typically find in the water uh, and you know in case you do have like a mossy area you could do it but normally you don't find anything green down there apart from some algae or whatever um but you know that's not something you wouldn't have okay well we've done the basic work and to not make this tutorial awfully long, um, I will now go and show you an example how to make these things look a lot more natural. Because one thing that is pretty important to every riverbank, and I'm just gonna go to my example over here, is they are not empty. You have a lot of stones and stuff on the riverbank because usually that's how they look and you've seen that in the pictures at the beginning. Now, what is very important about this is that you don't overdo it and you don't um, make yourself in a position that is too much work so what you can do and i'm just going to show you the master tip now because honestly that saved me so much time so what you want to do is and i'm going to show you two pieces or like two ranges of pieces that you can use the first thing is the aquatic four rock very important stuff is just put them all down these the, the ones that you will use um most typically the four rock 09 the four rock 07 i would also recommend the four rock 08 this one's also good then scroll down still not sure why they're not in the same area but then you want to use the small four rock and you can use every bit of these ones you can just put them all down over here um oops and there you go these five as well now these are the rocks that you typically want to use um very important is make sure that you put them all into a building this is the most important thing that they're all in a building i'm uh, going to explain to you guys why um well actually there are two reasons why but there is one major reason why so what you want to do now is you are going to basically move this into an area where you feel confident um that you oh, actually just leave him there and the first thing we are going to do is let's edit the color to a color that really gets into the same vibe as your lake now we do want to have a little bit less of uh, the saturation and we want to have it a bit darker stuff like that however to make it a bit more pop let's do it a little more bright okay so it just does pop from the lake a little bit more later so apply that one and you've got the color now go into the building very important before you start do anything go down to random rotation and make sure it's checked that is very important and also make sure to have the um, angle slab deactivated and definitely very important once you copy it you press v on your keyboard to make align to surface because align to surface is very important and make sure that align to water is not activated and random rotation is also not activated very important otherwise it doesn't work what you want to do now is basically just click just just push it into the shoreline or the riverbank or whatever you're building just make sure that you click them you know I'm, I'm gonna stay to this area over here um and don't worry that it's looking quite weird right now okay so this should be enough for this piece i'm gonna get rid of that one over here and the deeper you go into the water you can have more stones and the further you go up i would actually spread them out further from each other because also once you do that for animals you have to be even more careful because you want to leave some traversable area as you know these stones are rather restrictive when it comes to you know traversable area um so what you want to do as you can see is just pick yourself these type of stones and just keep on clicking okay you can't really do anything wrong just try to find a good balance 
um, the more, as I said, you go into the water, the bigger the stones are. You, the further you go out, you can actually go a bit more crazy with these smaller ones, like these areas, and try to just follow around your shoreline. Make sure that you don't go and just do something over here. Just try to follow a little bit of the of the shoreline that you have. And this is rather quickly done, as you can see. Um, these are the smaller ones, so we're just going to just you know keep some of those in. I'm not going to do too many, as I said, just for the sake of the tutorial. I'm just going to plop them in now and just make sure that you have them all over here. Nice. Just a couple of those in here. You know, nothing, nothing crazy. I think it's still very easy to understand what we're up to. And then just like put some of those in. Make sure that you also go down into the water a little bit, you know something like that and then the last bit as well goes over here just like so so you've got a lot of stones and um, you might now think this looks very over the top and you're right so you're going to select all of them press x and then obviously this menu pops up where you can move things up and down and you will exactly do this move it down quite significantly you can actually go even more crazy depends on how much you want like so and then you can also go in certain areas like that one over here i want to have this further down and i want to have this area a little bit more up for example there you go just escape the building and as you can tell it looks already quite a lot more realistic now in order to make it really feel even better you go to the natural stone of your choice it doesn't really matter which one you use uh, it needs to just fit to your area i actually want to go no i'm just going to stick with this one and then you t you know what you want to do is you use some more bigger rocks to create maybe here and there just a couple of more realistic looking bigger rocks just make sure to mix them in you know really again just don't overdo it just make sure that you just have certain elements here and there to break up the mood of these things you can even use smaller ones and push them into the water just like give it a bit of a different texture and uh, once you're happy you know we're going to add some foliage to it but as you can see this is already pretty neat um, and make sure to not add them to the building because you will ever need the control over the color if you feel like okay this doesn't match you can always match it later on so for example over here i feel like we need to just adjust that a little bit more to make it fit a bit better with these rocks and maybe even more like this Whatever. So that looks good. You know, now it's actually even more fitting. What you also want to have, you always have stuff that is just kind of pushed to the shoreline because of um, the water. So what you need also are some little things and we are going to use the birch pieces over here. Um, as you can see, the problem with the birch pieces still is they're aligned to the uh, floor like that. What I recommend is just put them down and just put a couple next to each other. Like, you know, maybe like this and then yeah let's just use one more like uh i don't know is that like a bigger one yeah that's nice um yeah you can you can do different types of i'm just gonna do one but typically you would do two or three of those combinations you know just go in select these three make a group out of them because now they're oriented the right way and you can just you know plop them down here to the to the ground and in this case you can actually you know make sure to align that to the water just like here you know just put it in there and there and maybe something like in between here and there and then just go to nature and then you can also maybe like you know take like a bigger one that is aligned to the stone you know this is just meant to break a little bit with the boredom of just having stones and stuff again i'm just going to do it for this area you also might want to add like a birch tree over here and then maybe there is like a fallen one in the water maybe we're not going to use the biggest one let's use the middle one i don't know if that's good just like yeah lay it down over here i think that's fine and then we can also have like a broken down one which is coming from the water and lies into the tree just to give it a bit of an idea okay see that's already where we're going and um immediately your shoreline starts to look a lot more realistic a lot more you know how it would be however that's not all. Sometimes these river banks don't look like that. Sometimes they are a little bit different. And one very good solution is, and this is something I found out thanks to the help of Haribo. Uh, he doesn't really know about that, but I saw his uh, wonderful build that he made uh, for like the Lost Gardens I used for one of my videos. And he did something that I found very clever. Now, you can do this with this piece over here, the Tropical Rock. This one works pretty well nearly in every um, biome you're in. Very important is that you have a flat ground and then align it to the 
to the floor once, make sure then that the Align to Surface afterwards is not activated anymore, V on your keyboard or just click it down here, and then go to the height you have. However, the random rotation needs to be on. And what you can do now is just paint a little line where you want to have it. And the random rotation helps to make it feel a bit more natural. Just make sure to always follow the line slightly. Sometimes when the rotation doesn't really exactly do what you want, uh, you can do certain things different, but very important is that you just follow it a little bit like that, okay? So just do it like so. And there we go. I'm not, I'm not going to do it all the way over here, but just like a little bit. So that's neat. What you do now is again, same trick as before, just make sure to make it one building. And then you go into the building. What you can do now is just select it, push it, and just, you know, well, this is not, well, let me just like, push it down, push a little bit to the side, a little bit to the foreground, and then do it twice and push it back again. And then you can use all of them and push them down a little bit. How much you want, it depends a little bit on you guys, like this. Okay, now you've got this wonderful line. However, it's not really exactly what you want because now you need to reconnect that, first of all, to the area in the back and you need to have something in the foreground that breaks the mood again. So what you want to go, go back to nature, make sure to use the same rock because you can also do another good piece for that is the mossy rock. And uh, one more piece that you could use is the dynamic mossy rock. So these all work pretty well. It depends a little bit on which area you are in. I love to mix these two as well. So we could now go in with this piece and just click this piece in on several occasions, you know, just to get it a bit more mossy here and there. You know, just like that. And then I go back to the um, normal one I used, in this case, the tropical one, and use some other things, like for example, that one. Make sure to get it to the same height and then search yourself for some areas where you can just bring them into the ground just to, you know, have a little bit of a um, difference here and there. All right, that's already it. You don't want to do more than that. What you need to do now is go back to your terrain. And now very important is that you find the exact height at which you want to reconnect. So this is a good height and then bring it down to the foundation like so. Try to find exactly the, oh, I found actually the exact spot, so that's nice. Okay, and then you can actually start painting. Sometimes when you're too close to the water, you won't be able to do it. So you will use, um, I'll need to just push it a bit more in. I'm gonna show you in a second how you do that. So that's neat. And what you go to do is then just click everything, just copy it over until you are reconnected. Something like this. And then you want to make sure that this is nicely uh, connected into each other. You can several pieces. I'm going to use um, one that always works. And this is the wonderful Arrowwood Bush 8 meters. This is a big one. You can just use it like so. And then, you know, just connect some of these so it doesn't look as weird. And then you just, you know, this then from, from this point on, it's your creativity, how to bring these things together. You can, you know, put a tree here and there, make sure to use some bushes um, to hide some of the edges and then obviously use the terrain. I like to use the uh, long grass for that as well, because it just, you know, as you can see, it just gives a nice transition. There you go. You can even paint that a little bit further in and then just go to the soil light and give it a bit of a connection. And there you go. There you have it. There is another wonderful little shoreline. So you've got both of these things now in the video. Um, one is this very shallow shoreline. The other one is a more like hard edge. And this is how you actually build very realistic riverbanks. I really hope this was helpful. This tutorial was a bit more in depth to really show you how to achieve that in less than half an hour, which I think is a very good time frame uh, for this rather detailed tutorial. And um, yeah, as you can tell, there are more ways than one to do the exact riverbank. And so if you combine these things, you can also easily do stuff like that, which obviously is a bit more in-depth because it took me, well, two and a half hours rather than 20 minutes. That's obviously the difference. Now, with that said, I really hope you guys found this helpful. I really hope you guys have a wonderful time. At time, stay safe, everyone. And if you found it helpful and you want to see more tutorials in the future or you want to binge watch all the old ones, you better sub to the channel because that helps me, helps you. And uh, well, yeah, have a good time. Thank you guys so much. And goodbye.